The Florida Community of Mindfulness is happy to make these talks available to you. If you find this talk to be a benefit, please consider making a donation to support us. You'll find a donation button on the Talks section of our website, floridamindfulness.org. Thank you, and may you be happy and free of suffering. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming this morning. So uh, for those of you who are new, we will not be giving sort of meditation instruction more than we did in the guided meditation, but there are other uh, places within our community, other activities, where for those of you who are more interested in learning more about meditation and mindfulness and mindfulness practice, there are various kinds of orientations and classes in which you can learn this. But this morning I want to continue uh, on a series of talks that I've been giving and other people over the past year. Uh, over a year ago, uh, our community decided to, as everything else is going on, all the activities we do, to sort of have in the background uh, this program of what we call Nourishing Well-Being. We really wanted to uh, uh, encourage uh, members and non-members to uh, take care of themselves. And so we've been using uh, these teachings, uh, old teachings uh, from the Buddha, uh, called the uh, Four Nutriments. And uh, they've really been uh, kind of updated uh, by Thich Nhat Hanh. And so they're good teachings uh, on the four nutriments uh, in the Plum Village community and, and elsewhere. I will just mention the previous three now, uh, but you can go to our website. I think we have a whole page on nourishing well-being and uh, different talks are all uh, on the past ones are all available. But simply, uh, maybe to begin, uh, just, you know, oftentimes we think our, of ourselves uh, and our bodies and our minds as static things, stable static things. Uh, but that's not really the way it is. It is very porous. It is always changing. It is always renewing. It is always affected. It is, uh, there's a lot of osmosis going on uh, between uh, so-called us and uh, the world. Uh, and... Uh, in a certain way, uh, our body minds are like sponges. Sponges, uh, you know, they'll clean up whatever you, <laughs> whatever you <laughs> expose them to. Uh, they don't have any say in it. Uh, in a certain way, that's often the way uh, we have carried on our lives as sponges, just taking everything in. So the Buddha, um, in his sutra on the Four Nutriments, said, uh, actually, uh, we need to be very conscious of what we are taking into our body-mind. Because our, our intake is conditioning our body-mind. And so he... Uh, he looked at these four areas of, of what's natural to all of us. And the first area, of course, is uh, edible foods, which is most obvious. Now, again, uh, you know, I remember, I, I forget, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, when all of a sudden there was this slogan, the older, you're older uh, maybe it's still around, you are what you eat. I don't know if anybody remembers, you are what you eat. Now that, to many people, may sound these days, oh, of course. But in those days, that was sort of radical. You know, we just thought, oh, you're just going to eat whatever you want, you know. And had no relationship to anything else. You know, you just eat for enjoyment. You eat for pleasure. But the idea that somehow our body, our health, our well-being, disease, energy, longevity, you know, may have something to do with what we consume, uh, we come was a revolutionary idea. You are what you eat. And so, you know, 2,600 years ago, the Buddha talked about that the first nutriment 
is edible foods. And in uh, consumption, the Buddha said, there is wholesome, there is neutral, and there is unwholesome. Now again, there, there are talks on this, so I won't go into it. Uh, and again, I think that's sort of the most obvious uh, uh, place of uh, you know, uh, nutrition and consumption. Uh, the second one, he said, was sense impressions. So, you know, our bodies are not just simply consuming with our mouth food, but we have in our body eyes, nose, ears, you know, mouth, taste, and a whole sensory experience of body. And so the Buddha said the sense impressions, they're feeding us too. There are wholesome things to look at and there are unwholesome things to look at. There are wholesome things to hear and there are unwholesome things to hear. Smell, taste, touch, okay? And so the Buddha said, we have to be very careful and have criteria in in terms of what we take in through our sense impressions. And you know these days, and we've got on about it, uh, you know, the ability, especially with electronics and screens, uh, our ability to be constantly taking in sense impressions is almost uh, nonstop. And yet the criteria, wholesome, unwholesome, neutral, uh, neutral, is often uh, not in our awareness. So again, we just take it and take it and take it and take it in and do not understand that that is nourishing or not nourishing or the opposite of nourishing our body-mind. See, so who are we? We're more than what we eat. We are what we consume. And we are consuming with our bodies, right? Our mouth or our senses, sense impressions. And then the third thing he said, uh, and again, I think I spoke on this last time, was what might be called volition. Volition means sort of intention, sort of like all, you know, what is my intention in life? What is my intention for today? What are my aspirations? Where am I putting my energy? What are my desires? You see, all those things, because that's conditioning sort of our life and where we go in life and what we do in life. And there are wholesome intentions and there are unwholesome intentions intentions, and there are neutral intentions. There are aspirations that are quite ennobling, that really produce well-being, and there are all kinds of aspirations, intentions uh, that are meaningless, and they're all that are toxic. There are many things we aspire for and yearn for that actually cause us suffering or cause other people suffering. So the Buddha said, Uh, We have to pay very attention to volition. Kind of where am I putting my energy? Okay, so is that, I mean, (laughs) again, there are are these other talks you can listen to if you haven't heard them or listen to them again, or there are things you can read in the sutras. So those are the first three. And again, we spent a lot of time in our community looking at that. Again, this idea that we are constantly taking in, and what we're taking in becomes us. You know, why am I the way I am? Because of my pattern of consumption. Now, the truth is, most of our consumption has been very unconscious. We have not been aware of this. So we just have taken every, we were children, we just took everything in from our family. We, teenagers, we just took everything, you know, what are are the peers doing? What are are the other kids doing? We just, you know, we go to college, you know, all the things we do. We go to work, we, society, we, we, we consume, 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 consume. And then we wonder, why do I feel the way I do? Why do I have the mind that I have? Why do I think the way I think? Why do, why do all these things come into my mind? Anybody who sat in meditation this morning kind of might be aware, things just kept coming up, didn't they? Even though we weren't, we're not doing anything, right? We're just sitting here. 
But for the wonderful thing about meditation is we are sitting here aware of what's going on inside us. Most of the time we are not aware of what's going on inside us. We are unconscious. We are asleep. But when we begin to meditate and become mindful, we're waking up. And we go, wow, look at all this stuff that's coming up. Right? Well, where's it coming from? Well, it's coming from our minds or our storehouse consciousness. Well, how did it get in there? Consumption, 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 consumption. Okay. Now, the fourth uh, nutriment, remember the first is edible food, second is sensory impressions, third is intentionality, volition, you know, big, small. The fourth, which is really the key, is consciousness. This conscious mind of ours. What is it consuming all day? Right? So think about your mind, right? Sort of your basic conscious awareness, your mind, and what it's doing all day. And think about all the things that it's thinking about, ruminating about, obsessing about, you know, worrying about, angry about, resenting about, all the stories it's telling us itself, right? Think that that is your consciousness consuming something. And what we're consuming with our consciousness is creating our minds and our mind states, right? Now, in Buddhist uh, psychology, there's there's lists of 51 wholesome, unwholesome, and neutral mind states, right? So the same way, uh, you know, you might find lists of healthy foods and unhealthy foods, you know, and depending what sort of diet you follow these days. You have lists. These are healthy foods for me. These are unhealthy foods. These are foods I want to consume. These are foods I don't want to consume, right? Is that clear? Anybody ever been on a diet or anybody sort of a, you know, just a kind of a, you know, you're paleo or you're vegetarian or you're vegan or you're, you know, endless varieties or you're on a weight reducing diet. You have criteria, right, of what you can eat and what you can't eat, or what you want to eat or don't want to eat, those which support what you want to do to have a healthy body, and those things that sabotage, right? Everybody know what I'm talking about. It's so obvious. Now, please, how many people have a diet for their mind? How many people have criteria? Oh, I know the kind of mind I want, so these are the mind states that I'm going to consume. These are the mind states I don't want to consume. I mean, this is simple. How could we have missed this? Right? Well, because nobody taught us this, you see. Our families didn't teach us this. Our schools didn't teach us this. Our culture didn't teach us this. Because our culture and often just tell us to consume, 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 consume. The more you consume, the better off you are. But this way of looking at our patterns of consumption now in terms of our own mind, see, this is getting very um, personal, right? See, this is getting into the unseen. So we look around the room, you look at me, right? It's hard to really tell what's going on in someone's mind, isn't it? And many people in this world are good actors. There's often no relationship between how they present and what they really think, what they really feel. So it's kind of a mystery, isn't it? But yet, 
it has to stop being a mystery to us as individuals. We have to be aware of meditation, mindfulness, right? Remember those things we were doing earlier? Oh, how do we become aware of what's in our mind? Mindfulness, meditation, awareness. How do I learn if I don't know already criteria, wholesome, unwholesome? Well, study Dharma. Right? The lists are there. We are very fortunate, you know, uh, in America to, <laughs> you know, receiving uh, the, the, uh, uh, this 26-year-old, 2,600-year-old, uh, uh, very developed psychological system. So we have this 2,600-year-old very developed psychological system that clearly enumerates and defines these wholesome and unwholesome and neutral mind states. So we can, you know, now we have criteria to, to evaluate our own mind and mind states, which are very important because we are, many of us, habituated to various kinds of mind states and we are not aware of their effect on us because we are like children who don't know better. In a certain sense, we've never matured that we really see the effects that are storytelling to ourselves, the effect it's having on us and in our capacity to relate to others. So, when someone has done something uh, that we resent, that's made us angry, what do we do? Anybody here ever have that experience? (laughs) What do we do? What? Well, yeah, we blame them. So let's say we blame them. But how do we blame them? We ruminate, we think over and over again about what they did, and I can't believe they did it, and blah, 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 and we're blaming, and we're, right? But we don't just do it once. We do it how many times? 10,000 times, right? I mean, and, you know, because why? See, we wouldn't do it outwardly too much. But inwardly, we are, you know, we're free people, right? If I want to go over this rotten, miserable story about that only makes me feel bad day and night for years, right? It's a free country. We can do whatever we want, right? If I want to worry about something, I can just worry about it day and I can even get up in the middle of the night and worry, right? Isn't that true? We're we're free people here. You see? You know, everybody, please take a moment to reflect on your, the things you love to think about. The stories you might have been telling yourself even today. The little resentments, the little hurts, the little worries, the little fears the little disappointments, the little sadnesses. Everybody know what we're talking about. And please be aware, we don't just tell it once, do we? If we tell it once, we tell it 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. And what is the effect? See, we've never thought about it. 
what is the effect this is having on my mind? In this moment, as I go over the story, what am I nurturing? Within my own mind. I'm, you know, every time we think about something, every time we have an emotion, every time we tell a story, we are conditioning our mind. Remember, our mind is like a sponge. The sponge doesn't have criteria. It has, no, it has no, nothing to protect it, right? And many of our minds are like that. There's nobody to protect them. There's nobody to take care of them. There's nobody to guard them. There's nobody with a list of criteria to say, you're, you're wholesome. You come in. You're unwholesome. You don't get any play here. Without that criteria, without that guard, without that watch person, it's very difficult to transform. You see, many of us, maybe, you know, kind of people who are here this morning, we're here because why? We want to transform. We want to change. Right? We want to be better people. We want to have a more wholesome mind. We want to have a more peaceful mind. We want to have a more loving heart. We want to have a, be more compassionate and understanding and accepting and open. Isn't that true? Yeah. How come it hasn't happened? We have to ask ourselves, how come it hasn't happened? Because we haven't had this peace. We haven't connected the dots. That I am conditioning my mind all the time, in this case in terms of consciousness, by what I am thinking about. The kind of emotions I am cultivating. All the time this process goes on. So many of us are kind of public figures. You know, we, we, we kind of, in public, we show one face. But in the privacy of our own minds, we undertake a very different process. Again, there's nothing illegal about that. And yet, there is a cost. And that's what we have to wake up to. That's what this teaching is trying to tell us. In the same way, there could be many people who've realized, yeah, even though I really like eating junk food, you know, it's really not good for me. Right? So therefore, I give up, you know, my impulsivity and my uh, short-term... Uh, uh, benefit of getting something that tastes good because I want to learn to really provide nutrition to my body so it is healthy, so it is energetic, and so it can live long. Right? We, we understand that. Can I have a similar attitude to my mind? That is, that is the challenge of this fourth nutriment. That we stop being unconscious sponges. The first two edible foods and sensory impressions relate to how I'm relating to the phenomena, the activities of the world and the things around me. The last two, intention, volition, and consciousness relate to the mind. And consciousness relates very much to volition. Like, what's my intention, you see? Is my intention to have a wholesome mind? See, if I don't have any clear intentionality, aspiration for the kind of person I want, for the mind I want, then I can't apply, you know, there's no reason to apply criteria. See, if, if, if my... If, if I want to, you know, any, anybody here want a, a peaceful mind? Right? I mean, see, everybody wants a peaceful mind. 
right? Donald Trump wants a peaceful mind. Everybody, everybody, if you asked him, they'd say, I want a peaceful mind. Yeah, of course I do. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good intention. Or, or, or I, I, I don't want to have an agitated mind. I don't want to have an unhappy mind. You know, okay, that's a good intention. Oh, I want to be of benefit to people. I want to be able to love, to understand, to nurture, to take care of people. I want to be a support to people. I don't want to do them harm, right? Those are all wonderful intentions, right? To do or not to do, right? But how do you achieve it, (laughs) you see? So the aspiration intention Wholesome, unwholesome is very important, but then, you know, this consciousness is, the, is often the missing piece for us. Right. Am I clearly under, you know, the same way with food, do, am I clearly undertaking a path in life where I am clearly aware of the wholesome and unwholesome mind states that I consume? And even conversations. So not only are we worried about things, disappointed about things, hurt about things, resentful about things, angry about things, but then we what? We tell everybody else. Right? Now, what do those conversations nurture? Do they nurture wholesomeness? You know, in my talking with other people, people that I'm close with, people that I work with, people, what am I nurturing in this conversation? When I'm talking about the misdeeds of others, when I'm gossiping, you know, talking about this one, third party stuff, what am I nurturing in this conversation? Am I nurturing understanding? Or am I nurturing, you know, judgmental, critical mind? Mindfulness, meditation, concentration. These are very healthy mind states to cultivate, presence, as opposed to being scattered and distracted. So in the, when, if you go more into it and look in these uh, criteria, these different mind states, you'll see there's lots, it's very interesting the way the ancients uh, put it together a little different than, than, than how, how, how we might. But this is, this is very key. So please, uh, well, let's, let me just, questions, comments. Yes. Yeah, neutral, neutral means that some things are, if they're not wholesome or unwholesome, they're neutral. They're just neutral. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel bad or good. It just kind of, it's neutral. You, you want to say more. So, so we might say, um, but again, everything is subjective. So you might, yeah, so you, I might say, okay, so... Uh, th- having uh, thoughts about someone that are, you know, let's say someone's uh, giving me a hard time, but rather than generating anger or impatience, I'm generating uh, patience. I'm generating understanding. I'm generating compassion. Oh, they must be suffering. So it's the same thing is happening, but my mind state, what I'm generating, is wholesome, unwholesome. Okay. So that does that make you? So that's clear. It's the same experience, but what is, my, what is the response of my mind? Right? Am I using this situation to cultivate, again, all those qualities of mind that I see as positive, or am I using this situation to cultivate all those, uh, you know, 
you know, but again, our mind, we, we are so habituated to negativity. You know, we don't think ruminating about things that are negative, that's, that, like that's bad, right? We think that's perfectly fine. We think it's totally justified. They did do that, right? And I have every right in the world to just replay that scene over and over again in my mind, always feeling what? My own self-righteousness. This feel, you know, but what are we cultivating? Step back. What am I cultivating this time? Is this what I want to cultivate? An angry mind that always feels it's right? I mean, I mean, is that clear? Yeah, so neutral could just be nothing. You know, it's sort of neutral. You're just going through life. But again, you know, even, even we might say uh, things that are not overtly or clearly negative or positive, but are neutral, kind of meaningless. We could say, oh yeah, that's not, this is not really conditioning my mind one way or the other. But we may be missing an opportunity because we spend so much time, you know, you know with the meaningless. So we might say, yeah, I'm really not doing anything bad, right? And I'm really not doing anything good. And I think in our culture, there's lots of opportunities for kind of marking time, right? So it may, it may appear neutral, but yet because it's a, it's a missed opportunity. In that sense, it may be unwholesome for us. Is that, so it's, you know, we, it can get more and more sophisticated. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Can you give examples from each category? A few examples of? Yeah, so I would say fear, anger, you know, despair, doubt. You know, doubt is a very big one. In Buddhism, doubt. Uh, in Buddhism, doubt is right up there. <laughs> and the big doubt, the thing to doubt, is to doubt that there is a path that can take one out of suffering. You know, there is a path to wholesomeness. There is a path to goodness. There is a path to awakening. To doubt that. Is a, is a significant, uh, unwholesome mind state. The second aspect of doubt is to doubt one's own capability. Right? So you may, you may say, oh yeah, this is a very, uh, yeah, this is great. It works. I, I, I believe it's true. But, you know, I'm too broken. I'm too neurotic. I'm too this or that. You know, so this kind of doubt, very unwholesome. Right? So, all the kind of afflictive emotions, negative mind states that we may uh, talk about, that brings unwholesomeness, right? Now, what is wholesome? Love, compassion, understanding, patience, courage, consistency, perseverance, you know, for the good. You know, these are all mind states to cultivate. Acceptance, as opposed to non-acceptance. Openness versus resistance, right? So, I, th I think it's kind of simple, okay? Don't, don't overthink it. You know, it's, it's really, again, and people who've been around know, I, I've heard me say this before, how do you feel when you're angry? I mean, beside you feel very self-righteous, feels great to be right, it's great to blame others and know they're wrong. I mean, that feels, in the moment, that feels great. Right? But what are we doing in that moment? And what opportunity are we missing? You know, what am I reinforcing? Because again, our mind is a sponge. The more we go over these things, even in the privacy of our mind, over and over and over again, they are just... And this is a whole thing with, uh, you know, with Buddhist psychology. We have these seeds in us, these positive, negative seeds, wholesome, unwholesome. 
but it's not like they're static. They're just always coming up, going down, always coming up, going down, right? And they're affecting each other. So we're always, this is sort of what's going on. So something happens, something comes up, or we get a little irritated resentment, right? Kind of just happens. What do we do? Right? Do we grab onto it? Do we cultivate it? Do we intensify it? Do we repeat it? Get stronger, stronger, stronger? Eventually, you know, eventually we have to drop it. Right? I mean, even, even, even ourselves, we get sick of it after a while. Right? Unfortunately, what, what we do then, we'll, you know, we, we drop it for a while, and then we say, well, let me pick up something else negative I can ruminate about, you know, so... I mean, you know, so that's what we do. But in that initial, when it comes up, as a mild irritation, as a mild worry, as a mild, fe- you know, fear, as a mild doubt, if we don't feed it, if we don't nourish it, you see, we're nourishing negativity. We're nut- nourishing unwholesomeness. If we don't do it, it will not grow stronger. And it'll actually go back down a little weaker. So over time, even though we might have spent our whole life cultivating negativity, there is a path to transformation. We transform the seeds that are already in us. You know, we can't throw them out. We can't extinguish them, right? But we can transform them. How do we transform them? We change our relationship to them. Is that clear? But at the same time, we're putting most of our energy into what? The wholesome. So they can grow. We want certain seeds to get smaller, be less intense, come up, right? We want other seeds that are wholesome to get stronger, to come up more often. It's not just going to happen by coming to a talk. It's not going to happen by reading the book. It's not going to happen by, you know, having the conversation about it. It's only going to happen when in the privacy of our own mind, we begin to practice this. And that is one of the unfortunate truths that I have to share with you this morning. (laughs) Okay? You know, I wish it was different. Right? You know, that's the unfortunate truth. Right? You know, many people look for other ways, short fixes, drugs, alcohol, shopping, consumption, grabbing after this and that little momentary experience, right? To feel wholesome, to feel well. But they don't last because they don't, they don't have a strong basis in our mind. We are conditioned by our mind. And up to now, we have not had a guard at the gate with criteria. That is our mindfulness. We have to be mindful of our mind states. And we have to have criteria, wholesome, unwholesome. And we have to be willing to act. So it's not just a matter of having the criteria. Again, many of us might know, oh yeah, I know wholesome, yeah. Yeah, when I'm angry, it doesn't feel good, you know? I mean, if you had a choice between the way you feel when you're really angry and the, really, and the way you feel when you really feel loving towards someone, which feels better? I mean, do you have to think about it? Which feels better? Love. I mean, we all, when we're kind, when we're understanding, when we're patient, Right? When we're accepting, when we're receptive, it feels good. Right? We feel open, we feel relaxed, we feel warm. When we feel angry and resentful and hurt and scared and worried and despairing, how does it feel? Terrible. All right, and yet, I mean, so there's a, you know, there's a kind of a clear criteria. Wholesome, also wholesome. We, we know how they feel, but we never ask ourselves, right? You know, what am I doing here? And what's going to be the effect of this? You know, we learn to do it with our food, exercise, you know, the more obvious things. 
but we never really learn to do it with our mind, our mind states, our conversations. What am I cultivating here? What am I reinforcing here? Because whatever we're cultivating and reinforcing, it's not benign. It's not like going to go away. We are cultivating all the time this, these seeds, these wholesome, unwholesome, positive, negative seeds. You know, each of us are responsible for our own seeds. You know, if you really look at Buddhist practice, that's one of the big things we're doing. Right? We're cultivating seeds. We're nourishing the ones we want to grow. And we're not nourishing the ones we don't want to grow. We are planting ones that we want to see in our mind. And we are stopping planting ones that are fundamentally unwholesome. Okay? And we need criteria. So is that give you a better sense? Other questions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 So let me, can we stop? I just, I'm trying to remember it all so I can repeat it because this where we're being live streamed. No, that's good. But uh, yeah, so the, the issue is, or the co- or comment question is, but isn't it true that when we are like angry or resentful, there's a kind of perverse pleasure because we feel it, it's good to feel right. It's good to feel they're wrong. We feel strong. We feel powerful, right? And isn't there kind of a perverse pleasure in that. And then you said, but also, isn't it also true that this sense of rightness and blah, blah, is reinforced by our culture and, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the problem, you know, and that's why we need, we need mindfulness, we need, and, and we need a, you know, you know, we need teachings because as somehow what you say, yeah, this is, this seems normal to us. Right? You know, I mean, it's funny, we had a work day yesterday morning (laughs) and somebody was announcing, you know, that we've brought healthy snacks. And I think he said we have bananas, uh, grapes, and pretzels. And I just had to say, oh, I didn't realize that pretzels was a, you know, I mean, not that it's terrible. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was funny, right? Because like, again, healthy snacks, what's the criteria? You see, I, I might have a different criteria than this person, you know, because this person is saying, well, it's not Cheezos or something, you know, you know what I mean? It, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's like in the hierarchy, it's like healthier than, right? Uh, so again, it's criteria, right? And again, I would say in the same way, I mean, just following the food thing, because there's lots of food that is not good for us. Right? It's clogging our arteries. It's making us prone to all kinds of diseases. And yet we love to eat this. Is that not true? Okay. And we will continue that until we get some criteria about what's healthy and not healthy. We get some intention about what kind of body we want to have. So even when in the short term there's a desire or whatever, something goes, no. Toxic. Something goes, no, 
it's sabotaging my aspiration or intention. See, that's consciousness. That's becoming conscious. That's waking up. You know, many of us, we, we are asleep at the wheel of our lives. So in the same way, you know, we might say that, that remembering, mm, I think I'll pass on, you know, on, on this food. Thank you very much, I'll pass. Or when you're shopping, you pass, right? In the same way, we need to learn to pass on these mind states by remembering, yeah, short term, feels great to be self-righteous, know that I'm better than everybody else. Right. But in the long term, what am I cultivating? You see, and that's, you know, I think that's, well, it's funny, you know, those of us who remember being children or teenagers or those of us who've been parents that were children and teenagers, we know. I mean, this shows kind of, for many of us, we are still fairly immature. We know that one of the things we are, I mean, I remember my kids were teenagers. Uh, you know, one of the things we're trying to get them is what? There are consequences to actions Right? What do we know about teenagers? The future doesn't exist. It's all about what? Right now and right? impulsivity, right? And pleasure, and, right? So, it, you know, and as a parent, you're trying to, but hold on. You know, your life's going to go on. <laughs> there are consequences to what you're doing, and it's very hard to get them through to them, right? That's one of the things which are, and little children, we're doing the same thing. There are consequences to your action, even though it's, you know, even though, you know, hitting your sister on the head in the moment feels, you know, justified. There are, you know, you see what I'm saying? But we don't have that within ourselves. You know, many of us are still like children. We want what we want we want our pleasures. We want our feeling of self-righteousness. We, we, you know, we, 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 enjoy, you know, we love our obsessions. We love our ruminations. You know, you know, we, we love our neuroses. We love our fears. We love our hurts. We love our issues. How do how do we know we love them? Because we have such a close relationship with them. When they come into our minds, we welcome them. Come on in. Yeah, I haven't really thought about you all day. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me doubt myself for a little while here, just to kind of renew that doubt. Right? Let me remember my issues from childhood, just to keep them alive a little longer. Let me remember why I'm supposed to be angry at that. Oh, yes, now I remember. I can't believe they did that yesterday. Let me, let, me, let me chew on that one a while. Sound familiar? So that's what we're dealing with. Now, again, this, this, this seems natural process of our mind is not natural. It is something we have unconsciously cultivated. Same way, you know, bad eating habits, bad exercising habits are just something we've been cultivating. It's not fixed. In Buddhism, nothing is fixed. Everything is causes and conditions. Right? Change the causes and conditions, situation changes. We want to change our mind, we have to change the way we relate to the seeds. So that's, you know, this is, you can get into a, oh, you know, if you see your mind as a fixed thing, you can go, oh, this is, whew. you know what I mean? I mean, you can sit in an hour of meditation and watch what arises in your mind and go, whew, this is hopeless, right? I'm never going to train this mind. I'm never going to learn how to be mindful. I'm never going to learn how to concentrate. I'm never going to, uh, you know, have wholesome mind states. Not true. But it's, it takes retraining. It takes reconditioning. It's a process. Because nothing is fixed. Because when you sit in meditation, not, it's not just one thought arises and it just stays there the whole time. Is that the way you noticed in your meditation? What do you notice? Boop, boop, up and down, up and down. You know? That's all coming from your storehouse consciousness. That's what's going on all the time. 
except, unfortunately, I mean, the good thing about sitting in meditation where you can't move is you can't act on it. But you can ruminate if you want. But in the world, we, we, we kind of pull off all our self-awareness and our controls and we just go with it unconsciously. You know, we're not even aware that we're cultivating these toxic mind states. Right? Yes. Does any of somebody else raise their hand? Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's an excellent question. As a beginner, and in a certain way, we're all beginners, you know, where do we start? Well, You know, and this is important, especially for Americans, because we are doers, right? Well, let me get on with it, right? I got to change this mind of mine, don't I? But what we don't like is often that things take time. And there are certain skills to be developed that if we take the time to develop them, the process of transformation will be easier. So I say, where do you begin? You begin with mindfulness, right? I mean, whatever you've discovered about your mind, <laughs> you know, as a beginner, you've been doing it for decades, okay? So nothing's gonna change. And if you don't start today, it doesn't matter, okay? But what you can start today is becoming aware. And you can develop the skills of mindfulness and mindful living. So as you start going through your day, you're now conscious. So when you're angry, you know you're angry. When you're irritated, you know you're irritated. When you're frustrated, you know you're frustrated. When you're happy, you know you're happy. When you're at peace, you know you're at peace, right? So you begin to be mindful of your mind. You begin to be mindful of what you eat and what's behind that, right? Many people eat nothing to do with food, it has to do with their emotions, their desires, their minds, you know what I mean? So you bec the first thing is you become aware, right? You learn to be mindful. You learn to meditate. You learn to bring mindfulness in your daily life. You develop criteria. You think about intentionality, aspiration. What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of mind do I want to have? How do I want to relate to other people? What kind of person do I want to be in relationships? Do I want to be somebody who take, 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 takes, or do I want to be somebody who gives? So you develop some skill, some self-awareness. You do kind of your own self-inventory. And then you decide, where do I begin? Now, I certainly would recommend you don't begin with your like deepest seated stuff, right? Because you got to build up strength. So I would begin with things that are more amenable to change. But one of the things that we can begin to do is to label our experience. Right? Even to say to ourselves, in this moment, I am cultivating resentment. <whistles> you know, not like I'm resentful, but like I'm aware that in this moment, I'm angry. In this moment, I'm cultivating worry. In this moment, I am ruminating about the past. In this moment, I am worrying about the future, which is really what we're doing, except we're in the what? We're in the story, you see. You get out of the story and, you, you know, you don't change anything, you become aware. Well, that's what I'm doing, right? 
I'm aware that right now I am eating a pint of ice cream. <laughs> and I'm about halfway through. <laughs> see, it's funny, but it's like, see, at that moment, that allows us to have choice. Right? I'm aware what I'm doing. You see? And then if you have a criteria, but I, I want to stop this. Right? Oh, maybe I should put the spoon down for a moment. And just see, you know, what am I really feeling inside me? You see, it doesn't have to be, like, big. And you're like, really, I really got to get this mind of mind under control. You know? No, we have to be present to our minds, aware. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, you know, take no prisoners kind of change. It can, be, it can be gentler and more understanding and compassionate, but it has to be very clear. The clearer you are, the more persistent you are. Yeah, I mean, anybody can change anything. Has anybody here ever changed anything significant in, in the way they are in life? Yeah, everybody has. If you can change one thing, you can change everything. It's the same process. We have to make up our mind what is toxic, what's not toxic. What supports me in my life, what sabotages me. What supports me in how I show up in relationship, and what sabotages it. Right? And then am I willing to kind of act on that? So this is sort of a very... um, a willingness to be very honest with oneself, to hold up a mirror to ourselves. Do we like holding up a mirror to ourselves? No. We like holding up a mirror to everybody else. Isn't that true? We love kind of seeing everybody else's faults and how everybody else should change. And Right? We, we, we're great at that. But hold up a mirror first to this one, to look at my actions of body, speech, and mind, as it says in Buddhism, and to really apply criteria, to be self-aware, self-observant. I mean, is that clear? This is not, I mean, the, the thing that's always, I've always loved about Buddhism, it's, well, there's a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> Philosophy and psychology, It's actually so simple. Am I willing just to be present to myself? Present to my mind, to what I'm thinking and feeling, and really ask myself, is this really the kind of person I want to be? How many people say my my aspiration in life is to be an angry person? My aspiration in life is to be a fearful person. This is my deepest aspiration. My aspiration in life is to be a self-centered SOB. Now, there could be some people who would agree with that one, but I think, I I would think most of the people in here don't, you see? And yet we might find ourselves, right? Cultivating those kinds of mind states. Why? Because we're bad people? No. Because we have these seeds in us. That's all. They're not us. Right? The gardener is the cultivator of seeds. The the gardener is the cultivator of plants. Right? But we are not the plants and the seeds. We have to be clear. That we have a mind, we have mind states, we have seeds within our minds, but we are the cultivator of that. And we can change, we can change. Other questions or comments? The kids will be coming in shortly. There's a children's program today and they come in at some point. And when you saw those people who left before the talk, those there's a teen program, so they... They do whatever they do. Are there any other uh, questions or comments on this whole process? You 
Now, so these four these four nutriments, edible foods, the body, sense impressions, intention, volition, and now consciousness. You will get a lot of mileage because they're so simple. And they relate so directly to just what it means to be a human being and really what's going on all day in our life. So uh, please take time. Again, you can come here to this talk. You could enjoy the talk, not enjoy the talk. And you could walk out of here and forget it. Our minds are very porous. You will only get any benefit from today if you take it with you, if you reflect, if you chew on it, and if you start practicing. Is that clear? Or else it'll be be no benefit. It'll just be one of those seeds that just go down into your storehouse consciousness and get lost down there with all the other stuff that are stored away. If you want it to be actualized, you have to bring it up. Is that clear? It's not going to happen. Over time, it'll be more... Over time, if you cultivate it, cultivate it, cultivate, it will be more natural. It will come up more naturally. But in the beginning, we have to be very conscious about how we go about our transformation. So good, we will stop here.